How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. So, for those who don't know, my day job is working as lead designer at the 3D printing studios in Perth. And a question I get asked all the time is which 3D printing process is best? So there's probably literally hundreds of processes in the 3D printing theme. But working out which one is best for your project can be really tricky. So what I wanted to do in this video is go through some core processes and demonstrate what the benefits of them are and what some of the drawbacks of each process might be. So the first process to consider would be FDM. So FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. Um, parts produced from FDM are really strong and great for functional prototypes, but the part quality finish is not that good. The layers are always quite obvious and visible. So FDM is essentially a glorified glue gun. The plastic is melted out line by line, layer by layer. And it's one of the few processes that actually lets you print hollow parts so you can print with a honeycomb structure inside for less weight and almost equal strength. So FDM machines are probably the most affordable printers you can buy at the moment. I mean, my Up Mini's an FDM, it was originally 1300 when I bought it, and now you can get them for 695 bucks, ready to run out of the box. And they're a great way to get started in 3D printing. But as I said, the part finish quality is not that good. You can smooth over parts using the acetone vapor bath process that I've demonstrated before, and you can check that out here. Uh, but you do start to lose a bit of the detail if you do that. So, yeah, FDM is very good, but if you want higher detail, it's not the way to go. The next process to consider is SLS. So SLS stands for Selective Laser Sintering, and it's essentially nylon powder that's sintered together with a laser. Parts are very strong, very detailed, and you can create moving interlocking parts very easily because the unsintered powder essentially provides support for the part as it's being built. SLS machines are really expensive. They're, you know, upwards of a few about hundred thousand dollars. And even though the patents run out, there's still not any that have dropped down to anywhere near consumer levels of cost. So SLS machines will be owned by large companies and they will batch your parts together into a single build to make it most economical. So with SLS, there can be quite a lead time between sending your part and getting it back. And that's because the unsintered powder actually degrades each time the machines run and you can only reuse it sort of two or so times before it's too fluffy essentially to reuse. Something to watch out with it, with SLS is the parts will degrade um, and discolor over time. So the nylon is very porous as it's been sintered, not melted together. So you by, by you touching it, the oils in your fingers and any dirt will rub into it. You can dye it very easily because it is porous so using clothes dye. And that works quite well and helps sort of stop any nasty discoloring being so obvious. But over time, SLS parts will start to look pretty rubbish. Another thing to watch out for in SLS is the parts will shrink and a technician will account for this by scaling the part before it's sent to the machine. But if it has very thin walls or very thin features, you may notice things that are slightly incorrect compared to your CAD. So that's one thing to be careful with. A lot of good companies will stop this from happening, but some poorer companies will do a less good job at it. So that's FDM and SLS, both very good processes for large functional and decorative parts. But if you want something really, really detailed, what do you do? Well, you go with SLA. SLA stands for stereolithography. It's essentially a liquid bath of UV sensitive resin, which is selectively cured with a laser or a projector. DLP is a variation on the on theme with stereolithography. So SLA is still one of the highest detail processes available. You get machines that go down to the micron layer heights and the parts just look flawless. You cannot see the layers that have been used to construct it. This also has its downsides though. SLA often is very expensive and the parts that they produce are often quite small, except for a very select few gigantic SLA machines that do exist. Very big downside of SLA is the parts are very, very brittle. So because they're UV cured, they're also quite UV sensitive. So if you leave your parts in the sun or God forbid the boot of your car, you're looking at parts destroyed in a matter of hours. Whereas ABS, plastic and FDM processes will sit in the sun all day and just be fine with it. So SLA, if you really need the detail, go with it. And also another very cool thing about SLA is they've now developed wax-like resins. So you can produce jewellery masters using SLA and burn it away in an investment cast and then cast directly from that. So there's quite a few jewellery companies that now own SLA printers for that sole purpose. But what if you need a full colour print? Well, there is processes that will do it, but they have quite significant drawbacks. The oldest one is the Z-Corp process. This is essentially 
uh, inkjet head like in your, in your inkjet printer at home, but it's printing ink and a binder into a plaster-like, it's not plaster, it's proprietary powder, but it's very brittle. So you get parts out of the Z-Core process that are very fragile. You then have to infuse them with a glue or an epoxy or something to give them some more strength and a gloss. But if you drop your Z-Core print, it will end in tears. I don't have any examples of Z-Core prints because it's the process I would never use. But it's often used for architectural models um, and small detail models where they have to have colour. Although in architecture modelling, um, SLS is starting to replace it. Uh, the Z-Core process because you can get such high detail into SLS despite it only having one colour. The last process I'll talk about is don't use 3D printing at all and the reason I'm saying that is 3D printing has been hugely hyped up so often people think it's the best way to go but for example if your parts quite flat or very flat and only has a few cutouts you know why not go with laser cutting? Laser cutting is a very cheap very fast process which can produce very accurate parts with you know really nice finishes you can't do this with 3D printing. I mean, you could maybe do it with a large SLA, but it would probably cost you 500 bucks, but this is you know, $10 worth of, the, of laser cutting. So, for example, this project, the fasteners were 3D printed, but the base was laser cut. And likewise, if you have a block of material that um, has a few holes in it, you know, 3D printing that's completely pointless. It's going to cost you a huge amount of material, and it won't be as good as getting a block of actual material like metal and just going through a manual process of drilling the holes out or even CNC if you have to. So always keep in mind what's the best way to go about getting your object. Don't just think I will use 3D printing. There's a lot of things that need 3D printing to be produced, a lot of geometries that are only possible with it. There's also a lot of things that don't really need it. So there you have it. Hope I made your decision a little bit easier. Any decent 3D printing company will offer these core processes. They might just call them something slightly different. For example, Shapeways calls SLS white, strong and flexible. We call it high strength plastic, but it's all the same stuff. It all comes out of the same machines and um, has the same properties. So next I'll be addressing the other very important question. How long does 3D printing take? So this is another question I get asked on an almost daily basis. So be sure to click the sexy subscribe button so you don't miss that one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time here on Megas Bye.